Okay, this video is just going to be a short little introduction to what are known as flows and cuts. And this is a topic that you would encounter in a discrete math course such as graph theory. So let's talk about a transportation network and what it is. And definitely I'm going to do some more follow-up videos on this to go in a little bit, uh, some, more, some more depth and detail over this stuff. Okay, so a transportation network, or sometimes they're just simply called networks, or a network. So a transportation network is a weighted, directed graph satisfying the three following conditions. So there's going to be one vertex with no incoming edges called the source. There's going to be one vertex with no outgoing edges called the sink. And then we're going to assign weights to each edge. And each weight is going to be a non-negative number, and that's called its capacity. So you could think about this maybe as being uh, like an oil field, and you're trying to get oil to the refinery. So notice over here on the left, I've got my vertex A. If you look at all the edges, or we often call them arcs, arcs in uh, transportation networks. So I'm going to use the word arc and edges interchangeably. Uh, so if, if I switch back and forth, please forgive me, I just mean the same thing. So notice vertex A, all of its arcs, all, they're all directed away from the vertex A. There are no edges or arcs coming in to vertex A. This is going to be what's known as our source. So vertex A is going to be our source. You could think about that as being like the oil field. So that's where we're, we're, we're getting all the oil from. And once we've got all that oil, we're going to start shipping it through pipelines to uh, maybe different places. And eventually, we want to get it to the refinery. Well, the refinery is going to be our vertex E. Notice vertex E. It only has arcs coming into it. It doesn't have any edges or arcs going out to any of the other vertices. So vertex A, every, all the edges are leaving it. Vertex E, all the edges it only has edges coming into it. That's what's known as the sink. And in this case, you could think about that as being like the refinery. That's where we're trying to get our oil to. And you could think about maybe like the edges of the arcs as being pipelines. So maybe this is in thousands of gallons. So maybe there's a pipeline from, you know, the oil field A to maybe some city B, and it can carry 6,000 gallons. Uh, maximum. Same thing, maybe there's a, a, a pipeline from the refinery to some other city C. It can carry at most 8,000 uh, gallons of oil, etc. And notice for our vertices B, C, and D, each one of those, all of those vertices have arcs coming into them and also going out of them. Okay, so that's what's known as a transportation network or again just a network. So you've got a source and you've got a sink. Now, another thing that we're going to do is we're going to assign what are called flows. So we'll do that here uh, as well, and we'll pull out a couple observations. So a flow in a transportation network is it's just going to be a function f that assigns to each arc or each edge a number so that, well, the flow along a given edge is greater than or equal to zero, and that flow is less than or equal to the capacity along the same edge. And for each vertex V, other than the source and the sink, the total flow into V equals the total flow out of V. So let's maybe, uh, let's maybe look at an example of this real quick. So let's see, let me put our capacities that we had a second ago. So let's see, we had a capacity of 8, 6, 3, 5, 4, and 9. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to uh, assign two numbers, and I'm just doing these at random. So, well not totally at random, but uh, uh, nothing special about these numbers here. You could certainly use other ones. Okay, so the first number is going to be my capacity. I'm going to assign another number to it, which is going to be representative of the flow. So. Maybe from arc A, uh, so my arc from A to C, it's got a maximum capacity of 8,000 gallons, say, per day or per hour or per, per whatever. Let's suppose the flow along that is zero. Maybe we're not using that one for some reason. 
Okay, so from our, our arc from A to B, let's suppose it's got a capacity of 6, or again 6,000. Let's suppose we're maxing that out and we're, we're using a flow of, again, I'm going to stop using thousands, um, of 6. Same thing, let's suppose from A to D it's got a capacity of 3, and it's using a flow of 3. So again, we're, we're utilizing all the capacity. Okay, so from B to C, let's suppose it's got a capacity of 5, but a flow of 4. From B to D, let's suppose it's got a capacity of 6. I think I maybe didn't label that one a second ago. Um, I think I left that one out on my other graph, didn't I? So let me fix that one real quick. So from B to D, we should have an, another uh, value labeled there. I left that one out. So from B to D, let's suppose it's got a capacity of 6, but only a flow of 2. From D to E, let's, it's got a capacity of 9. Let's suppose it has a flow of 5. And from C to E, it's got a capacity of 4. Let's give it a flow of 4. Now, notice uh, a couple things here. So let's pick on, for example, um, let's look at vertex uh, uh, D here. Notice that the flow into D, well, let's see, there's a, a flow of 3 from A to D, and there's a flow of 2 from B to D. So the flow into our vertex D, that has a flow of 5. Notice the flow out. Notice the flow out of D is also equal to 5. So we're adhering to that second requirement that we, that we stipulated, that the flow into a vertex has to equal the flow out of a vertex. And uh, let's see, are there any others? Same thing, if you look at vertex B, for example, there's only one, uh, one flow into it, and that's a value of 6. And notice leaving B, you've got a value of 4 and, again, a value of 2. So there's, there's a flow of 6 into B and also a flow of 6 out of B. And you can check for the other ones as well that that is also valid. So the topic that we're not going to tackle in this video, but what we're going to do in the next one is, ultimately, we want to figure out, you know, most likely, you, uh, you know, a Probably, a, a, I'm sure you can imagine, a common situation would be trying to maximize the, the flow from your source to your sink and figuring out a path that can do that, right? You want to get as much oil from the oil field to the refinery as you possibly can. So we're going to talk about that in the next video, actually trying to maximize that flow. So the last little thing I want to touch on here is what's known as a cut and the capacity of the cut. So I didn't really write down the definition of the capacity and the cuts, but um, I'm sure you'll be able to follow along here. So for a cut, a cut has to satisfy, really we, we want uh, just sort of two things to happen. When we do a cut, we're going to separate our vertices. So in this case, we've got A, B, C, D, and E. We're going to separate our vertices, uh, the vertices, into two disjoint groups. One group will contain the source, and the other must contain the sink. So I'm not saying that it only ha it only has to contain the source and it only has to contain the sink, but on w one group will contain the source, maybe some other vertices, and the other group of vertices will contain the sink and maybe some other vertices. So let's look at two different two different cuts that we can do here. And again, there's 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 more. You know, I'm not saying there's two in general, but just to give you a little illustration. Suppose I do a cut. I'm going to just draw a little dashed line. Suppose I cut my vertices, so I've got two examples here, so let's look at the one on the left first. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting, uh, I'm making a cut where in one group I've got the vertices A, B, and C, that's going to be one group of vertices, and then on the other side of my little dashed line I've got the vertices D and E. So notice again, in one of my groups, I've got the, the source, and in the other group, I've got the sink. So when we talk about the capacity of a cut, 
So when we look at the capacity of a cut, what we're doing is we're looking at um, all edges that go from one of the groups to the other one. And they'll sometimes label these as like, uh, you know, uh, the one that contains the source. My book labels that as um, the, the, the vertices. They call that the set S. And they call the other ones the set T. I, I don't know um, if that's standard notation or not, but that's what I'm going to use. So notice um, vertex B, that that's goes um, from one of our, that has an arc from one of our uh, groups to the other one. Also from A to D. And let's see, we also cross our little dot dashed line from C to E. When we talk about the capacity of a cut, what we do is we look at the flows. So from A to D, we've got a flow of three. From B to D, we've got a flow of 6. And from C to E, we've got a flow of 4. So 3 plus 6 plus 4, that gives us a value of 13. So we would say the capacity of that flow is equal to 13. Now I could look at another cut. Suppose my other cut, I simply only include vertex E. And again, that's just simply the sink. Well, that's still is considered a cut because uh, on one side, we've got the vertices A, B, C, and D. I don't think I labeled vertex D there. And then in my other uh, set, I've got E. So the source is contained in one of my groups. Uh, the sink is contained in the other. And the same thing. Notice if I look at the capacity. Uh, here I've only got two edges. We've got from C to E, and that's got a flow of 4, and then from D to E, that's got a flow of 9, which is oddly enough 13. Huh, I wonder if it's the case that the flows, um, the capacity of the cuts are always the same. Maybe they are, maybe they're not. That's something we will address. So okay, this is just a quick little introduction into uh, uh, cuts, capacity, flows and cuts. So I'm definitely going to go into some more detail and do some more videos on this very soon.